Revocable Trust versus Bank of America, 720-032. Okay. Hand me the, take the 845 because that's continuing. Just what I have less on my desk. I do appreciate it and thank you. Council, could I get appearances, please? Good morning, Your Honor. Jacob Medrano on behalf of Mr. Tom Lucas, as well as Opportunity Homes LLC, and I have my client, Mr. Lucas. David Ochoa on behalf of Sun City Inn. Yona Chauvin, Pro Se. Michael Kelly for Nation Star. Okay, feel free to sit down. Okay, I got cross defendant Sun City Anthems Association's motion to dismiss Nona to an individual and trustee of the Gordon B. Hansen I got cross claims. I've got an opposition. Um, now, and then I've got Thomas Lucas and Opportunity Homes motion for summary judgment. And I have untimely, well, replies and motions on some of these. So where the court really has a concern is some of these things, we got last minute filings on some of this and we didn't even get courtesy copies on some. So I'm teed up and ready to go on what I have copies of, so counsel who wishes to be heard first? I, I would like to go first, I guess. Okay. Um, do you know if there was any of our pleadings that you're missing? I prefer not to point out people in okay. open court. I prefer to be, use that as a general friendly reminder All for right. people well, that if we don't have your courtesy copies, then it's kind of hard to, you know, go fishing through the files to see what you may wish us to consider, but go ahead, counsel. Understandably, Your Honor. We're here on our motion to dismiss. Um, under Guerin versus Guerin, a trust needs to be represented by an attorney. Um, Non-attorney representation amounts to the unauthorized practice of law, which is void ab initio. We understand steps have been taken to perhaps request um, um, an exception. However, Nevada law does not allow for that exception. Um, additionally, it's undisputed that Stephen Hansen had an interest in the trust at the time the pleadings were filed. Um, and we therefore uh, would say that the, the representation of that interest is void ab initio. Um, we would request that the claims against Sun City Anthem be dismissed, that the pleadings be stricken. Um, it's my understanding those are the only claims against Sun City Anthem at this time, so we would also request dismissal from the case. Um, the last issue is even if they were properly filed by an attorney, um, there's a jurisdictional bar under NRS 38310. And with that, we'll submit to Your Honor. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you to uh, to dismiss their second motion to dismiss for my not having an attorney was untimely. Also, I think it's untimely good. because of why, please. Um, they they turned it in on the twenty uh, second of of um, March, mm -hmm. and in uh, on January twelfth, this court granted my motion to intervene as a pro se and as a trustee of the trust um, per 8th District Court Rule 742. And so this motion is really a motion to reconsider that and under Rule 59, which requires that it be done in 10 days. Okay, so, so I'm saying they're untimely on that. They're, they have uh, provided two motions to dismiss, but no responsive pleading, either to my original cross claim. They had no mention of this attorney issue in their first motion to dismiss in February. And changing attorneys is really no excuse. It just provided them an opportunity to renege on the agreement that I had with the previous attorneys to hold a hearing on the counter motion to void the sale on August 6th. Further, they filed their uh, motion to uh, dismiss because of not having an attorney under Rule 41, saying that I violated rules of the court, and 724, 7285 NRS, unauthorized practice of law. This is kind of
kind of outrageous. I mean, it's, I'm a very reluctant pro se in this matter, and I've tried to retain counsel. Six attorneys have, I've talked to that have refused. You have to realize that in these, this area, 99% of the cases involve the bank. And so some attorneys are conflicted out, and some, you know, are just going where the money is. It's very difficult to get representation as uh, representing the uh, homeowner that lost the title. Now, these threats that they're making of sanctions, attorney's fees for the unauthorized practice of law are really intimidation tactics. And the case that they present in their claim even says that the purpose of this is to protect the public interest. And there's really nothing in this that um, uh, is a violation of the public interest. Another thing is that um, in the cases that they presented, they um, all were under um, the uh, appellate division, which has in the NRAP section 46, which is cited in their, their um, case, is a, a different wording, which says that a corporation or other entity may not appear without counsel. The district court rule 742 only says a corporation. It does not have that additional and other entity. So, in addition, I mean, it is moot. Nobody else is claiming any interest in this property. Uh, Steve Hansen has filed two declarations and uh, a, has a uh, disclaimer of interest uh, also on record and recorded. It's also been quit claimed out of the trust to me as an individual. And, and therein, can I stop you for one second? Yeah. And therein lies really a question that the court had, okay? And I have to look at the pleadings. Remember, I have to look at the pleadings because a motion to dismiss under 12B5. I've got to look at the pleadings on the face of the pleadings as it asserted. In your actual pleading, does it say that you have the rights as an individual? In the pleading to the court as a motion. No, yes. not as a, uh, okay. In the motion to intervene, it says, it cites the 7.42 and these other sections of the, and that none of them were disputed. Let me go back a step. And I looked at the order. Are you asserting that you as an individual have a right to this property? Yes. Or are you saying that you as a representative of a trust are trying to represent the trust who has a right to the property? That's the distinction I'm the trying chain, to... Uh, the chain of title, mm -hmm. it was in the name of the trust at the time of the sale. When the uh, original um, grantor um, died, I became the trustee. Because I'm going to I... now the sole beneficiary, and the property is in my. Well, do mind if I ask? So far as, do you mind if I ask opposing counsel just a clarification question on their motion so that we make sure we're on the same page? Counsel, if I look at the caption, okay. And the reason why I was asking plaintiffs, and I appreciate you've come into this case, haven't been through the whole history of the entire case from the get go. So, um, the caption says, "Do you pronounce your first name, Nona?" Okay. Nona Tobin, an individual and trustee. She has it as both roles. So does your motion to, to dismiss only go to the role as a trustee, or are you saying as It would a, go to both, Your Honor. Our understanding is there, there's no individual interest. There, there couldn't possibly be. It wasn't. I understand how she, she drew the caption, but there was no individual interest. The interest was in the trust. And the, there was two beneficiaries to the trust, one being Steve Hansen. She represented that interest, and it amounts to the another uh, unauthorized practice of law. So, just just so I'm clear, because I'm looking at a motion to dismiss standard, where in the pleadings in which you're basing your motion on, does it make that dis where you're going? I, I appreciate your argument, but I'm looking at a 12B motion. I'm going to let her finish, and I'll stay tuned and ask that question in a moment. Yeah. 
I, I would also just like to add, if you look, our, our motions were timely filed. I know she pointed out that. Um, right. That's a different, yeah. Okay. So, okay. So just so you're clear, okay, when you did your motion to intervene, remember you did your motion to intervene both in this dual role. The court was not in any way modifying because the court has no ability to do so. The rules are the rules. The court just follows the rules fairly and equitably in each and every case to ensure that there's full and impartial justice for each and every party in each and every case. So I wasn't, when I granted the motion to intervene, you had the same assertion that you're having today, which is that you individual have a right. And I didn't take any position, nor could I, nor would I, um, any position at that juncture as the merits of your claim. It just had to say whether or not under then the motion to intervene standard based only on, remember, what I had from the other parties at that time, which the parties have changed, the arguments have changed. So if someone didn't bring something to the attention of the court at that time, then I can't go back from what somebody's now bringing to the attention of the court and go back several months and say, you know, because I didn't know it then, right? So remember, a motion to intervene is only as the parties requested. It didn't elevate your status to allow you to represent a trust in conflict with EDCR 7.42. That was not the court's intention of the order, okay? Now I'm a, so to the extent that you're saying that there's any court ruling in that regard, there's a court ruling allowing you to intervene, but not the scope of what you're saying, the court order. It's not, cons okay, is that making sense what I just said? Um, I have a question when you said that it's in conflict with 7.42, it is not. I appreciate, I'm hearing your position. I'm understanding what you're saying. Okay, is there anything else you'd like to say? Go ahead. Yeah, like um, SCA is a required party. The, the sale was conducted under their statutory authority and the quiet title determination can't go forward um, with the other parties without um, SCA because I won't have any ability to protect my title. Now, uh, these attorneys did not get the approval of the board of directors to take this, this position in this case because there was no properly noticed executive session um, since this case has been filed uh, that has this as a subject. Um, so if you, if you still feel, you know, that there needs to be an attorney here, I had requested leave to amend per uh, NRCP 15A and their claim that everything has to be um, erased would be grossly unfair and punitive. And it's, it's, it's stopping me from protecting my rights after this kind of set it up so I had no other way to go but to court. Now, uh, NRCP 15A permits the filings to be amended in two situations applicable here. One, it, as a matter of course, before a response of pleading is served, and what I'm asking here, leave of the court, and it says, which shall be freely given when justice so requires. Appreciate it. Okay, um, before I go back to you, I'm just realizing, folks, that it's a quarter of 11 and realizing I'm going to have my other 9 o'clock matter afterwards. If anyone on my 9.30 or 10 o'clock that's not yet been called wishes me to reschedule your hearing so that you're not waiting, I'll be glad to do so. You can just touch base with my marshal and we can get you a new date. But I'm just, you can look at the time. I'm still going to take, obviously, my page 15 on my 9 o'clock and my page 4. And I can take the other ones afterwards. I'm just, it depends on how long you all want to be here if anyone wishes to reschedule. Anyone wish to? Okay. Not seeing anybody wishes to reschedule to a different date, then we'll just take them in ordinary course. No worries. Okay. Counsel, your response is your motion. Last word. We, we believe the unauthorized practice of law is not a correctable issue. It's void ab initio, and we would request that the claims be dismissed here on. If they get last, remember, if they file the motion, remember, then you get a chance to respond. They get final word, same way with every case. Okay, so the court's going to rule on Sunset Anthem Community Association's motion to dismiss cross-claimant Nona Toma as an individual and trustee of the Gordon B. Hansen's Trust.
cross claim cross claim the court is going to grant it in part and defer excuse me deferred in part and denied in part okay the court is going to defer it I'm going to set a status check for 15 days to see if there's corporate counsel under EDCR 7.42 with regards to the trustee role okay which is consistent with ensuring that we have a corporate trustee I'm going to deny it without prejudice with regards to Nuna Tobin as an individual because as an individual I have to look at the face of what the pleadings are before me and given the assertion set forth under purely a 12b standard the court would find it's appropriate to deny without prejudice so what that means is I'm gonna once we finish with the rest of the Jimmy Jack with the rest of this case we're gonna then set a hearing 15 days out to see a status check on corporate counsel if there is not corporate counsel for the trustee role okay counsel for the movement is correct that you know you cannot represent a trust in an individual capacity under EDCR 7.42 okay so in that regard I'm going to do a status check on corporate counsel I'm going to defer the portion of the ruling with regards to the trustee for that 15 days and if we don't have corporate counsel then I'll tell you that then in accordance with their motion it'd be appropriate to dismiss the trustee role you as a trustee role okay but I've denied it without prejudice of you as an individual and in so doing the court takes no position as to the underlying merits the court can only rule in the narrow scope of a 12b motion which is what this is can't take a lot of what you're asking the court to take into account because I'm not going to sui sponte turn it into a rule 56 it hasn't been teed up that way it hasn't been presented that way and it wouldn't be appropriate to do so okay so now let's move on to the motion go ahead counsel so, on the the issue of NRS 3310 would you take that up at the status check here yes Good. okay so 15 days in a moment I'm just gonna see if there's any other outstanding things before we so Okay, moving on to the motion for summary judgment. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Uh, against Ms. Tobin, right? I understand. Pardon? We have two motions for summary judgment. The first one is against uh, Ms. Tobin. The second one is against NationStar. Mm -hmm. So I'll start with uh, the motion Tobin. against Ms. Tobin. And I'll try to be brief because I don't think uh, it requires a lot of analysis here. Ms. Tobin is making essentially two claims in her complaint. One was for quiet title, and the second one is for breach of contract. With regard to the quiet title, we are not claiming, neither Mr. Lucas nor Opportunity Homes is claiming any interest in the property, at least since June of 2015, which is way before any of these lawsuits were filed. And the required element of an action for quiet title is that a party must claim an adverse interest to the plaintiff. So that's why I think this case is simply moot for quiet title make, uh, both against Mr. Lucas and Opportunity Homes. And it had been moved since um, June 4th of 2015 when we uh, executed a quick claim deed that disclaimed any interest in the property. Thank With you. regard to the claim for breach of contract, Ms. Tobin is alleging a breach of contract between herself and Forrest Barbie, a broker of uh, Berkshire Hathaway. She's not even alleging that there was a contract between herself and Mr. Lucas or Opportunity Homes, yet she brought us here for a breach of contract that we are not a party to. And one of the required elements of a claim for a breach of contract is that the parties have to have a contract with each other. But we don't have this contract. And uh, as a matter of fact, this, uh, this issue could have been disposed in the motion to dismiss, probably, because she didn't even allege that there was a contract between uh, herself and Mr. Lucas. But we filed a motion for summary judgment just to err on the side of caution to kind of force her to produce in a contract that she is claiming were breached. And in response to the motion, she has not produced any contract, let alone a contract that we could have possibly breached. And that's why we're asking for a summary judgment on both of these issues. The, the last claim, I believe, is for civil conspiracy. But one of the elements of civil conspiracy claim is that the conspiracy has to have an aim of uh, committing unlawful acts. Ms. Tobin is saying that we committed civil conspiracy to simply purchase the house or a breach of contract that we are not parties to or I don't even know to have an interest in the house that we don't have. That's why I believe this, this, uh, this claim should be dismissed and I want to say it on the record that they also appear simply to be frivolous because we had these discussions there's absolutely no claim that could have been brought against Mr. Thank you. Mr. Tobin. 
Ms. Tobin, I mean, do you, I didn't see a con. I, I will tell you, I'm inclined to grant their motion for summary judgment just to let you know because I don't see a contract that you even allege on your complaint. You haven't responded to their assertions that there was a contract with this particular party. Difference in what your allegations with regards to other parties. With regards to this party, I didn't see that you alleged that there was a contract between that party that you were part of. They're not the quiet title. They're not asserting any title, so they wouldn't be a party to that aspect. And I really am not seeing that you really have put anything. Now, theirs is a different standard. Theirs is a summary judgment under Rule 56. What I've got to look at is a different rubric. They've brought forth. I'm not seeing how you're saying that they were even involved in anything. So I'm inclined to grant it just to give you a heads up. So please tell me what I'm missing, if I'm missing anything. Um, well, te technically, they, they're in default. They didn't answer either the original complaint that uh, Nation Star filed against them or uh, they didn't answer the complaint. That I didn't see that you moved for default. Um, I turned it in to the court and they, uh, to the clerk. And they said, well, he's filed a motion for a summary judgment. So I didn't think that was okay, but I, I guess it was. Okay. So he didn't answer the complaint, mine or Nation Stars. And so this is the only filing he's ever had is this motion for summary judgment. I, I'm saying that he, they are a required party. Um, but since he filed a disclaimer of interest, and if he's saying he doesn't have any, any um, detriment to him if the, the sale is voided, then I don't have any Okay, so just so I'm clear, because I appreciate that you're representing yourself, are you saying you do or do not dispute the assertions raised in their summary judgment as to you? As far as the contract, you know, no, I, I, can, I can see why they're saying that. I mean, I know that they have information and upon discovery, it would come out, but it doesn't really matter in, in the final analysis, for me, voiding the sale is the important issue. And so if they say it doesn't matter to them, well, it doesn't matter to me if they're, if they're not a required party to that transaction. So then should this court's ruling be granting their motion for summary judgment, or are you two stipulating that you're dismissed from the case? I'm just trying to understand what the parties are telling me. So okay, I will on. insist on having the motion granted because we do intend to bring the motion for attorney's fees for even having to defend it. Actually. Court takes no position with regards to something that's not before it. Yes, and, but that's why I'm saying okay. that's why I want the judgment to allow me an opportunity to file a motion for attorney's fees. Well, if you add that, then it makes it more difficult for me just to. Well, I, the court can't take into consideration future pleadings. I mean, the court takes into consideration, you've heard me say this, every time you've been here in all sorts of cases, the court can only take into consideration the pleadings before it, right, and rule on the things before it. The court cannot provide advisory opinions, does not provide advisory opinions, and so the court can only look at what's before it. I just didn't know if the parties were stipulating, and so I needed to know that because, or not. Well, I can't because of that, and there are um, disputed material facts. Council, you get last words, your motion, go ahead. Uh, my last word would be that we already tried to stipulate to dismiss this case, that didn't go anywhere, and that's why we were forced to file Not this motion. <coughs> I didn't see that anywhere in the record, but. We, I propose a settlement. That, I that court can't hear that, the court's your trial court. Okay, so the court is going to grant the motion for summary judgment with regards to Ms. Tobin on the three claims of quiet title, breach of contract, and civil conspiracy. The court finds that the movement has met their evidentiary burden under NRCP 56, and the evidentiary burden in response that would have then gone to the respondent was not met. Um, parties acknowledge that there is no contract between the parties. Parties acknowledge that there is a disclaimer of interest. There's no contract, and there can't be a breach of contract claim. The parties agreed on that. There is a disclaimer of interest, and so there can't be, a, there's nothing, there's a ripe controversy with regards to a quiet title, and there's not been any opposition of evidence um, that the evidence that the court can take into consideration in response to the civil conspiracy claim so therefore the court is going to find it's appropriate to grant that as well and it's going to ask the movement since you're the prevailing party to provide an order in accordance with EDCR 7.21 back to the court after you circulate it now your other motion for summary judgment go ahead I'll tell you I'm inclined to deny it because I think there's material issues of fact between the two parties but go ahead yes the first issue is uh the same thing as we had with Ms. Tobin. Uh, National Star filed a motion for quite uh, a complaint for quiet title. Mm -hmm. Of course, we don't have an interest that has already been determined. 
So they were to ask to dismiss that claim based on the fact that it was simply moot be even before the action was filed. And the second thing I understand here on the position is that there is a, an issue of material fact with, with regard to the claim for unjust enrichment. Mm -hmm. But we have to keep in mind, even if the evidence that was submitted to the court was admissible, this claim is only for $6,000 or $6,500. This is a matter for small claims, not for a district court case, especially if the claim, additional claim that they brought was moved even before it was filed. So that's why I would simply ask to dismiss this claim based on the lack of such a matter jurisdiction. Good, Kelsey, your response? Your Honor, on the client title deck relief, uh, our client has asked for either a ruling that the deed of trust was not extinguished or that the HOA sale was void and must be set aside. Under Rule 19A, Joinder of Parties, the Nevada Supreme Court has stated that 19A requires that when a plaintiff seeks to set aside a conveyance of property, the person who received the property in the conveyance must be joined as a party. So part of that claim, we have joined Opportunity Homes, who was the initial buyer, and the two subsequent sub subsequent uh, purchasers, including the current title holder. Under Rule 19A and Supreme Nevada Supreme Court case law, they are a proper party to that. With regard to the unjust enrichment claim, um, again, my client has asserted that claim against Opportunity Homes, who was the initial buyer and the following transferees, including the current title holder. Uh, we submitted a, a declaration that authenticated the business record from Nation Star. And so it is admissible evidence that was separately filed. The document that was submitted attached to the declaration shows that my client paid a total of $20,000 in insurance and taxes. There may be only 6,000 while opportunity homes on the property, but total is 20,000. And that claim wasn't asserted just against opportunity homes. Like I said, it's asserted against the title holder. And there's case law in Nevada that you can join claims together if there is proper jurisdiction. I can submit on that, Your Honor. Also, your last words, your motion. Uh, yes, with regard to the claim for uh, quiet title, the case that they're citing from the Nevada Supreme Court is Johnson versus Johnson, which of course states that the transfer of real property should be joined as a, as a required party to a quiet title action. But the reason the court held that was because the transferee at the time was the actual owner of the property who held and claimed adverse interest in that property. It was a wife to whom the property was transferred, uh, a new wife of, uh, of a gentleman to whom the property was transferred, and the former wife was trying to uh, uh, reconvey the property back. And that's why she was the required party, because she held adverse interest in the property. Unlike we here, we disclaimed any and all interest back in June of 2015. So. Their argument saying that the transfer of property should always be joined as a required party is, uh, first, without legal basis, and second, doesn't make any sense, because if that was the case, we should be joining each and every transferee at any kind of point of this particular property, and that would be simply ridiculous, to say the least. Um, with regard to the claim um, for unjust enrichment, I understand the argument that the claims can be joined, but they have a claim against us. They're asking for unjust enrichment against us, not against the other parties. And in front of you, we have a motion to dismiss a claim that is against us, not against any other parties. So only the claims against the, Mr. Lucas or Opportunity Homes should be considered here. And I simply believe that even if that, well, as a matter of fact, the declaration that the council mentioned, I did not see a declaration attached to the opposition. When I went back actually yesterday, I noticed a declaration that was filed before even the motion was filed. And that declaration referred to a different exhibit, I believe, because uh, the opposition to our motion to dismiss talks about exhibit 13, and I have not seen any declaration that would authenticate this business record, uh, exhibit 13. So that's why I believe uh, our motion for summary judgment on this <coughs> should be dismissed 
even just for the fact that they didn't come up with any admissible evidence to counter our arguments that there is no unjust enrichment claim. Thank you very much. Sure. Court's appreciative of the arguments and taking the totality of the pleadings into account in the record and looking at the standard of an NRCP 56 motion, the court's going to deny without prejudice the motion for summary judgment with regards to NationStar. In so doing, the court does not make any affirmative determinations as requested by NationStar as to what was or was not voided, what was or was not party to that. The court's only looking at this as the movement appropriately set forth our motion for summary judgment and denies it without prejudice. In light of the rulings of the courts, the court's now taking care of all the pending motions before it. The court's going to remind the parties the EGCR 7.21 to provide the appropriate orders. And the court is going to set the status check that we talked about a moment ago under EDCR 7.42 for corporate counsel for the trustee. Uh, May, uh, yeah, okay. My clerk correctly did say three weeks is May 18th. I'll just tell you May 18th is an extremely busy day. Would you all prefer me to put it over to the following Tuesday, May 23rd? Or do you want to come join a large grouping of people on May 18th? Which do you want, May 18th or May 23rd? May 23rd is fine. A little bit less. Huh? May 23rd is fine? Okay, May 23rd. We're going to put it at 9.30 on May 23rd. Status check on corporate counsel. Okay, thank you so very much. Your Honor, just one more clarification. So I understand the motion uh, also with regards to our claim for quiet title is denied. It is denied without prejudice as well. At this point, I simply don't know what else I can do to get this claim out because we already disclaimed the interest in this property. I appreciate it, but when we look at the totality of the record, it's appropriate to deny it without prejudice. Okay? Thank I you. do appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Recalling, it's okay. I have Thank all you, parties Your Honor. back Thank on you. page 15 on my 9 o'clock, so I'm going to recall that and get that taken care of.